I have friends who are losing their businesses. I have friends that are being laid off. I have friends that are in the ICU at the hospital fighting for their lives. Yeah. You know, and these are not not just believers. These are like longtime missionaries and workers on the people who have given their lives for the sake of the gospel. And you go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another weekly video here with us at the Stone Table. It might look a little different if you've watched some of our other videos, but uh, we're in a little bit of a different situation in life right now. We're all kind of in our homes and in our, our just offices and back home again. And uh, so we decided to do this week's video this way. So Eric and I have jumped on here and we just want to have a dialogue, a conversation about where we're at right now kind of address some of the fear, some of the insecurity, some of the anxious feelings that we have about where we're at. And so, Eric, I'm going to throw one out to you right now. So get ready. Buckle up. <laughs> Here we go. But uh, no, uh, this week, especially here in Indianapolis, uh, th this week's been crazy, right? We yeah. On Monday, we find out we need to, to kind of lock it down a little bit, stay in your homes. Let's address that kind of just everybody is in a little bit of isolation and feels the whole world kind of is that way or majority right. of it. Yeah. Right. And so that brings up a lot of fear that brings up a lot of unknowns. We tend to, to look at the news and we tend to try to figure out what's going on and it can bring a lot of fear and we're all in the same playing field. Like you said, all across the world, we're, we're all in the same position. So I can't help but go as a believer, what, what's the, what's the point? We're all in the same, right. we're all in the same playing field. Uh, and believing in Jesus hasn't necessarily brought me something different than the other guy. My business is closing down and my work has stopped. Right. So maybe, maybe that's a harsh way of saying it. What's the point, but, but maybe address that today. Yeah. What are, what are the benefits of following Jesus, right? In a season like this? I mean, there's, there's not a, a get out of the pandemic free card, right. You know, so, so what are the benefits of being a Christ follower in a, in a scary, terrifying season like this? You know, I've been, I've been pondering that, right? I mean, I have friends who are losing their businesses. I have friends that are being laid off. I have friends that are in the ICU at the hospital fighting for their lives, yeah. you know, and these are not, not just believers. These are like longtime missionaries and workers on the people who have given their lives for the sake of the gospel and you go, come on, Lord. I mean, how does this work, right? Is there is there not any currency or benefit, right, to these people to, to right. be protected from these seasons? And I think, you know, we we kind of wrestle with that question. Maybe we don't, maybe we don't verbalize it, but I think some of us kind of, you know, kind of think, you know, it's the old um, televangelist thing, right? Give money to my ministry, and you're, you know, you'll have wealth and you'll have health and all of these things. Yeah. And so. Uh, even when we make fun of those things, I think somewhere in our heart, we, we wonder where the transaction is, you know? Yeah. And so I think one of the things I've been kind of hanging on to here, you know, God did not promise us a life uh, of no pain, of no suffering. In fact, he actually promised us the opposite. I think it's John 16. He talks to his disciples and basically says, hey, look, in this world, you will have trouble. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, he just flat out said it. In this world, you will have trouble. We, we like to gloss over that one, right? Like, eh, he's yeah, he's not talking about me. Right. So become a Christian. It's all smiley. It's all touchy-feely and everything goes well for you the rest of your life, right? Um, yeah. So I, I think we really have to wrestle with that. Um, but, I mean, Jesus promised us, in this world, you will have trouble. We are not, as believers, exempt mm -hmm. from the fallen nature of the world we live in because right. of sin. So we, we experience sickness. I mean, we are the first fruits of the coming kingdom, but the kingdom is not fully here, right? It's, it, and one day God will come and make all these things right and all these things new. But uh, in this kind of already but not yet season, we, we experience a lot of the not yet, which is kind of what we're feeling right now, right? Sure. So sure. I think one of the things that gives me comfort in, in these moments, though, is just remembering that God suffered too. So he's not, we, we, don't, we don't serve a God who's on the outside looking in on a God that's on the outside watching your business close, watching you get laid off, watching you struggle to figure out how you're going to make your rent payments and, and is distant from that, 
You know, I think it's Isaiah 53 it talks about the, the suffering servant that, that Jesus came. He embodied our, you know, our human experience and he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He, right. he suffered. He knows suffering. He knows pain. And so we serve a God who understands those things, not a God who is far off just watching us suffer. Right. And so in these moments, we can lean into the fact that our God who suffered, who knows our suffering, is with us mm. in these moments. And I think that's what we got to hang on to. Oh, for sure. For sure. And um, I, I resonate with that. And, and what pops into my mind when you're talking about that, though, is that, uh, yes, on a foundational level, I believe that. I know right. that he is with me. Right. Right. Um, but there are days that I wake up and I don't feel that there's days that I wake up and I want to shake my fist towards the air and say, uh, you know, oh, man, in the scriptures, it says that you you never leave us. You never forsake us. But but man, like I'm not sure where the paycheck's coming from next or I worked my life for this and it's closing this week, you know, or even the health of you. You were saying that you have friends literally fighting for their own lives and you go, man, where are you? And you don't necessarily feel it. So maybe on more of a, a practical level, right? On, on a practical, I, I hear you. I know that God is with me, but I don't feel it. What, what do we do today in that front? Yeah. You know, it, it's, um, it's a good challenge, I think, because sometimes we can be like, one of Job's friends, you know, sitting with him trying to explain everything away, right? Um, right. Or trying to be ethereal and and you know talk to people and 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 they're just kind of wanting to know how to how to deal with the next moment in time, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you know, I think from a practical standpoint, I saw a, a good friend of mine um, in San Diego uh, has a number of retail businesses, and um, you know they're they're on forced quarantine right now. The whole state. And they don't know how, I mean, it may last a whole lot longer in California than it lasts here. Sure. And uh, I've talked to him a few times, you know, via text, but I, I noted some things that he's been saying, even saying to himself and trying to encourage other others with at this time, he said, you know, I used to get up first thing in the morning, I would, I would get up and I would grab my phone and I would see what the latest news was, you know, what's the latest news? What are the, what are the COVID-19 counts and, and, you know, what are the next steps that they're going to do and how's this going to impact our business? And, you know, looking at the, the overnight sales numbers and how they're plummeting and not completely shut down. And, right. and uh, he said, you know, the first thing I, I had to, to do, or I had to remind myself of was to get in God's word first. Mm. So, so Good. we look into the word of God, then we look at our circumstances, then we look at the word around the world around us. And I think sometimes we get up and I'm guilty of this too, right? I mean, I get up, I roll over, you know, my phone's my alarm clock. So I see all the, you know, the notifications, messages that came in in the middle of the night. And uh, you can tend to look at God through the lens of current events rather than look at current, current events through the lens of God. So I think one of the things we've got to do is just stay disciplined in these times. I mean, let's, let's be honest. <laughs> Siri's talking to me here. Um, I, I mean, let's be honest. Sometimes we don't feel it, right? And so I think in those moments, we've got to go back to what we know. Uh, we've got to lean into what we know, and we've got to, to pray and hope and trust that the feelings will follow. Um, but uh, I do know this. I do know God promised suffering. I do know that God experienced suffering. And I do know that God promised, I will never leave you or forsake you. So in these moments, um, I think we've got to hang on to what we know and try to let our feelings derive from, from there. But, but let's be honest, uh, following Jesus doesn't mean we don't feel the shaking of the world when it shakes. Mm -hmm. We feel the shaking too, right? Yeah. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, or abnormal about being afraid, uh, being nervous, uh, you know. Uh, any of those things, those are natural human responses, but we have to go back and begin to look at our lives and our circumstances through the word of God. Um, and just remember that he promised us his presence. He promised us that. Yeah, and I, I tend to tell people that, uh, that I talk with, um, in situations where not, 
feeling or experiencing God, that one of the best things that they can do, it sounds counterintuitive, but one of the best things that they can do is tell God exactly what they think about him, about the situation, <laughs> about where they're at. Because yeah. even if it's angry, right? Even right. if it's angry and broken, um, there's something powerful in, in telling him where you're at. And yeah. I, I've done it time and time again in my own life. And I don't, I don't know why it works, but every time I do, there's <laughs> something that happens at the end of it that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is there with you in that. Yeah. And so keeping his word first and foremost, I was, I was telling somebody this morning, I, I, this, I was tired because of this week and all the changes that <laughs> happened. And, and I didn't, I didn't get up this morning. It was hard mm -hmm. to get out of bed. So the first thing I see is my daughter coming in the room and I'm up and I'm going and I'm doing And about an hour, two hours later, all of a sudden I'm, I'm finding myself frustrated. I'm, I'm yeah. finding myself e easily agitated and just mad at everything. Right. And realizing that I, I'm doing the opposite of what you suggested, right? It was the world first. It was the perspectives of the world first before it was the word of God. And so I think that is, that is a huge uh, practical step is to do that first. And the second practical for me is just, just tell God where you're at. And he'll I think that's you. good, man. I think that's really good. I find even as I pray, if I pray out loud and I articulate those things out loud, um, the Lord does kind of shape those. It's like, yeah. you know, you hear yourself talking, and, and being honest with him. And he kind of shapes and gives perspective to your words and your emotions in those times. I, I think that's, I think that's fantastic. For sure. Absolutely.